I'm going to read uh, the introduction I wrote for my own book, which I called The Journey Home. I am not a naturalist. I never was and never will be a naturalist. I'm not even sure what a naturalist is, except that I'm not one. I'm not even an amateur naturalist. The only Latin I know is Omnia Vincent Amor and In Vino Veritas. In boyhood I thought Cave Canum meant beware of the cane. I never studied botany or zoology or ecology or any other branch of natural science. Like most war veterans, I went to college, but mainly because that seemed easier than working. While in school, I majored in philosophy, not biology, and my intellectual heroes were Democritus, who died laughing, laughing at Plato, and Bertrand Russell, who died fighting, and Lao Tzu, who wrote one small best-selling book, and Beethoven, who will never die. The subject of my master's thesis was politics, the morality of violence. I failed journalism, not once but twice. During my long, erratic, seasonal career with the National Park Service, I was employed never as a naturalist, but as a ranger and sometimes as a fire lookout. The latter role, an ideal one for the amateur philosopher. Today I consider myself a working novelist, one of the few in America who works for a living. And my highest ambition is to compose one good, very long novel, which I shall call The Fat Masterpiece. And that accomplished, I'll retire to my hut in the heart of the desert and spend the remainder of my days in meditation contemplating my novel. I hope to become a rock. I plan to return in future incarnations as a large and lazy soaring bird. Much as I admire the work of Thoreau, Muir, Leopold, Crouch, Isley, and others, I have not tried to write in their tradition. I don't know how. I've done plenty of plain living out of necessity but don't know how to maintain a constant level of high thinking. It's beyond me. Some itch in the lower parts is always dragging me back to mundane earth, down to my own level, among all you other common denominators out there in the howling wilderness we call modern American life. My literary idols, anyway, have always been people like Rabelais, Knut Hampson, B. Traven, Theodore Dreiser, Celine Steinbeck, The Unloved. Several years ago, I published a book called Desert Solitaire, followed closely by Cactus Country, Appalachian Wilderness, and Slick Rock. Although classified by librarians as nature books, they belong really to the category of personal history rather than natural history since they deal ostensibly with actual places. They do contain descriptions of certain flora and fauna, bushes and bugs, rocks and snakes and the weather. All the technical information was stolen from reliable sources, and I am happy to stand behind it. But as people who may have read them should know, those four books are, in the main, simple narrative accounts of travel and adventure with a little philosophical commentary added here and there to give the prose a high-toned surface gleam. They have little to do with biological science. For I am not a naturalist, hardly even a sportsman. True, I bagged my first robin at the age of seven with a BB gun back in the farm in home Pennsylvania. But the only birds I can recognize without hesitation are the turkey vulture, the fried chicken, and the rosy bottom skinny dipper. My favorite animal is the crocodile. I'll never make it as a naturalist. If a label is required, call me a nature lover. Say that I'm one who loves unfenced country, the open range. Call me a ranger. 
Though I've hardly earned the title, I'll claim it anyway. The only higher honor I've ever heard of is to be called a man. So much for the mantle and breeches of Thoreau and John Muir. Let Annie Dillard wear them now. As I see it, my problem here is to explain what this book is about. Not to classify it, but to introduce it. This is the kind of book that needs an introduction, and to make sure it's done right, I'm doing it myself. The Journey Home, like its predecessors, Desert Solitaire and the others, is partly a book of personal history, one man's odyssey in search of his Ithaca. Like so many others in this century, I found myself a displaced person shortly after birth, and have been looking half my life for a place to take my stand. Now that I think I've found it, I must defend it. My home is the American West, all of it. This book is in part the story of how I discovered my home, in part a description of it, and in its emphasis, an effort to defend that home against alien invaders, as will be shown from another world. Most of this book was written during the past five years in the form of adversary essays and assays, polemics, visions, hallucinations, and published piece by piece in various odd places from Audubon to the Vulgarian Digest. Fragments of autobiography, journalistic battle debris, nightmares and daydreams, bits and bots of outdoors philosophizing, all stirred together in a black iron pot over a smoking fire of juniper, passion flower, and thorny mesquite. Agitate. It's a redneck slumgullion like any stew, and the only kind that makes a tasty, nutritious, and coherent whole. And why not? Society, too, human society, is like a stew. If you don't keep it stirred up, you get a lot of scum on top. Coherent or not, these chunks of words share one common theme. The need to make sense of private experience by exploring the connections and contradictions among wildness and wilderness, community and anarchy, between civilization and human freedom. Eat hearty, mates. Final note. If certain ideas and emotions are expressed in these pages with what seems like an extreme intransigence, it's not merely because I love an argument and wish to provoke, though I do, but because I am, really am, at heart, an extremist, one who lives and loves by choice far out on the very verge of things, on the edge of the abyss, where this world falls off into the depths of another. That's the way I like it. Written in Wolf Hole, Arizona.